Hi, everybody. So it's January of 1996, and I'm in my office at the Second City, and the mail comes. And I open up my copy of Home and Away magazine. And that is a tourism magazine put out the American, by the American Automobile Association. And I get to about page three, and a letter to the editor just like pops out at me. The headline <laughs> is Don't Promote Satan, which is very straightforward to the point. And the rest of it reads, and you guys are ahead of me, but you know, for the at-home audience, please quit promoting Chicago's second city. My last visit found three of its skits openly mocking Jesus Christ and Christians while promoting Satan. This is counter to every wholesome belief left in this country. Signed, G. Ross Alexander, Villa Park, Illinois. So I know that there's a phrase in our business that all press is good press. That phrase is fucking bullshit. <laughs> when you are in January in Chicago and you need to fill seats, the last thing you want is a national magazine imploring people not to come because you may be heathens. <laughs> so what do you do? Um, you can't make it go away. It exists there forever. So if you work at a satiric comedy theater, you frame it and put it on the wall of your lobby. <laughs> To be honest, we don't even know what show G. Ross Alexander was talking about. Uh, the current show had like no religious satire, and so we surmised that it was the previous show. Uh, there was a scene where a dad, played by Paul Dinello, sang a song to his daughter, played by Amy Sedaris, and the song was called, My Wife Left Me for a Guy Named Jesus. <laughs> but any actual pro-satanic messaging we think was imagined or projected by G. Ross Alexander. <laughs> so you can see there's a couple other things that we framed up there, and, and one of my favorites uh, is uh, this line that Michael J. Morris from Minneapolis, Minnesota uh, wrote, which was, I think uh, uh, the reason liberals laugh at your shit is because it makes them feel smarter about themselves. <laughs> Kinda true. <laughs> It's, it, it's interesting and fascinating uh, to work in a place like uh, the Second City um, where you can actually frame your hate mail. Um, but what's the point uh, of all this? Um, and the, the point is uh, that uh, to, to, to improvise and to innovate, you have to be able to fail. And you have to embrace your failures and you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna go up on your lines and you're gonna forget what comes next. Um, and uh, in, in our case uh, at the Second City, um, it has meant uh, years and years of making it up as we go along. And our work is filled with a variety of failures. Uh, I can think of a couple of them. Uh, great successes that were born of epic failures. Uh, a couple of years ago, the opera diva, Renee Fleming, uh, came to the Second City and she made reservations, but she didn't make the reservations. The concierge at the hotel made the reservations, and this is important because he didn't use her real name. Had we known that Renee Fleming was actually coming to the show, we would not have booked her into the show where we were illegally sampling her voice. <laughs> so, Renee comes to the show, and who knew she is kind of an improviser, and she leaned into the mistake, and she ended up coming up with the idea for a collaboration between the Second City and Lyric Opera Chicago. And the Second City Guide to the Opera, uh, there it goes, the Second City Guide to the Opera was an award-winning smash hit. Uh, in the mid-70s, uh, before I was at Second City, there was a new show called Saturday Night Live. Uh, that started picking off all of our talent. John Belushi, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner. Um, and our owner, Andrew Alexander, had to scramble to figure out a way to put up a, a, a you know, counter show. Uh, and uh, so he ended up putting up a show called SCTV, um, which had no budget. It was done in Canada. And I would suggest to you that 
I'm not trying to put down Canada, but seriously, we're in Edmonton, no one was there. And, uh, but I will suggest to you that the level of inventiveness that happened uh, on SCTV was there because of its disadvantages. And the thing about this work, and the thing about all of our work, is that we, it's our fear of failure that doesn't allow us to mindfully linger inside a mistake, which is a great place to be. We crumple up the bad review and we throw it in the garbage. One of my favorite improv phrases is by the director and teacher Rick Thomas, and he says to his students, you need to fall into the crack in the game. Fall into the crack in the game. And what he means by that is, to achieve your greatest creative potential, you need to reorient your instincts and look at any object that's in front of you, not as an obstacle, but as a possibility. And when we do that, we can achieve our greatest creativity. Uh, my uh, biggest success as a producer was a show called Pinata Full of Bees, uh, which played in the mid-90s at the Second City, and it was a critical smash. Um, but um, we learned a couple years later when we're looking at the receipts, maybe the worst selling show in the history of the Second City. <laughs> but the reviews were so good, we got booked to play the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. We got panned. They hated it. And worse than that, they, almost all the reviews said, well, clearly Second City is not the place to find great new talent anymore. This is with the cast for that show. Adam McKay, T Teresa uh, Mulligan, Steve Carell, John Glazer, Nancy Walls, Dave Koechner, Tim Meadows. Uh, I was talking to Adam McKay just a few weeks ago, um, and he told me something. He said that um, he directed the film The Big Short, and he said the idea for having celebrities come out and describe financial jargon uh, came from the show Pinata Full of Bees. Uh, in that show, uh, Adam played Noam Chomsky, but Noam Chomsky was substitute teaching a third grade class, teaching, <laughs> yeah, teaching them about the real America. Uh, but we realized in the lovely Midwest that no one knew who the fuck Noam Chomsky was. <laughs> so another actor would pop out as we froze the action and say who Noam Chomsky was. So what this was was a failure of the audience's knowledge turned into a theatrical technique of creative proportions that helped the show. And this is the work. The work is about failing and succeeding and trying and failing and failing again. When I started to work on this talk, uh, I was looking for the bad reviews from the Kennedy Center, um, and then in the comment section, this came up. Finally, someone posting the truth about Kelly Leonard's systematic destruction of the Second City brand. Uh, does anyone know a good frame shop in the neighborhood? Thank you. Mm -hmm.